In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can record audio into Push 3. So the first thing we have got is we have got two uh, preamps or two connections into Push. Um, we've got number one here and number two, which is here in this little gap. So I've taken a jack, quarter inch jack into there and I have a microphone here, which I have an XLR connector into a jack. Um, so first thing we do is go into this menu here and set this up accordingly. So we have two preamps. I'm obviously coming to channel one. If we have a stereo input, we can link these two together and have it as a one sort of knob thing uh, where it links the two uh, channels together. Um, Cause I'm only using one and I'm using a microphone, I am going to put it on high and take the gain up to about 10 dB. Now we're not going to get anything as of yet because we need to create an audio track for us to hear this. So if we come out of the settings menu, press plus, go to audio track and then click on default track. We can then select the track, which it already is, and then go to this, um, this mixer menu here, this button. If you're presented with this, just press the button again and then we can go to the input and output and then we can see that we are actually getting input from um, the microphone. If we don't want this to be monitored, um, which means that it's basically coming out of the audio speaker, so if I hit this again, you can hear that. If we don't want that, then we can turn it off. Now you can't hear it. Um, and then if the level isn't as hot as what we want it, which is looking like a decent level, I'll just speak into it. So that looks like quite a healthy level for me, um, which is fine. But if you want in more gain on it, then you can simply just turn it up here or turn it down here. Uh, on high, it goes up to 20 dB. On instrument, it goes up to 20 dB. And then online, it also goes up to 20 dB. So I'm just going to keep that on 10 dB. And with that now, what we've got is we, we've got an input that is coming in on this microphone that can be recorded. So before I go to the clip view, I am going to just turn this back onto auto. And then I um, make sure that my input is going to be an external input and it's select, selected on channel one. That's because this is coming in on channel one. If we had an ADAT uh, cable in there, we would select a different channel, which would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 or 16. But right now, inside here, we've got two preamps. We've got channel one, channel two. So if this was in channel two, this would start to get signal. But right now it's in channel one, so we're getting signal. So if I head over to the clip view and then I press record, So I've just um, sampled in just some short samples there. So I'm just going to change the loop length. Um, I want to edit this in a way so that this is set to 111. Set 111 here. That's all I want. It'd be nice to crop these um, after you've used it. Um, just because you want to keep it nice and tidy and just have it filled out. Uh, I hope that comes in a, in a later update. Um, so on the midi clips you can do it, but on this you, you can't really do it as of yet. Um, or if you know how to do it, then please just let me know in the comments. Um, so what I want to do with this is I want to convert this. So all we do is press on convert. I've done all this in another video, so go check that video out if, uh, if you're more interested in seeing in depth how we do it. I'm going to convert this to a simpler... So now we've got this. And I would like to adjust the start round about there. And I would like to add these slices. So 
if I delete that one, just hold delete, delete that marker. <laughs> If I zoom in on this one and then just uh, nudge this a bit further back again with this one and then there we've got as um, we've got our samples that we've loaded in. Let's just pl put something in on the sequencer. And then turn it again to poly mode. So we've just basically recorded his audio in, we've sliced it up, which was shown in another video, and then we've created that in the uh, sequencer. This is how we can manipulate sounds and, and things like that. So what we could also do is we could warp this in a different way. So right now it's just getting played back at the original sample. Um, but if we go over to warp and then turn warp on, we could then uh, use different warp modes whilst... Um, manipulating the sound so because this is on 82 bpm if we sped this up it will start to stretch the audio in different ways or compress the audio in different ways so that's on beats mode at the moment you can go to tones texture repitch complex or complex pro Notice the difference when you slow it down. So you can get some nice sort of interesting sounds within your recording. Um, you could also pitch the whole um, well, the whole sample range up or down. Or detune it. Um, We'll look at this more as we get into um, the sequencer and things like that. Um, but that is just a quick way of how you get audio into your push and you can manipulate it, convert it into, uh, let's say, a drum rack like this and then create your own loops out of it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.